JPA stands for the International Phonetic Alphabet, and it was developed in order to basically capture all of the sounds in the world's spoken languages. My name is Kritika, and if you're new here, this is a channel about language, culture, and spreading love. A lot of people ask me, what exactly is linguistics? And I always have a very hard time telling them because linguistics has so many different subfields and there's so many directions you can go with it. So today I thought I would explain this very small facet of linguistics that linguists do use pretty much every day and show you some interesting applications of it. So, like I said, the IPA was developed in order to basically capture all of the sounds of the world's spoken languages. It's written in an alphabet, which you can see on this chart. In order to read this chart, you would see that one axis is basically the different parts of your mouth, and the other axis is the type of sound you're making. So, for example, your soft palate and your hard palate are different regions of the mouth as are your alveolar ridge, which is where your roof of the mouth meets your teeth. And some examples of sounds you can make are a fricative, where the sound is being obstructed. Uh, you can make a stop, where the sound stops. Glides are things like where the sound glides through. And vowels are where there is no obstruction of sound. So this is actually one of the first things you learn in a linguistics class, as well as all of the parts of your mouth. So you learn everything that's in your mouth, as well as your throat, which we call the oral cavity or the vocal tract. That way you can see all of the parts of your body that are involved in making sounds. Honestly, I found learning IPA very eye-opening because even though I do speak multiple languages, there are still so many sounds that those languages don't have, and it's really interesting to see what other languages use as an everyday part of their speech, what sounds are really hard for me to make, which sounds I haven't even thought about. In this chart, there are also markings called diacritics, and these are used to add some more nuance to the sounds that are already there. So this tiny H is an aspiration diacritic where you can differentiate between p and p. This little square-ish one is a dentalizing one, so that's how you would distinguish between t and th, because these are made in the same part of your mouth. For the T example, you just use a different part of your tongue, which is kind of hard to map. It's hard to say, like, bend your tongue this way. So instead, there's just a diacritic that says dentalized, which means go closer to your teeth. This other diacritic is a nasalizing diacritic, so that's the difference between O and O. And there's lots of diacritics that hopefully try to encapsulate all of the diversity that the world's languages have. I can't say whether this is a perfect system or not, but needless to say, it does make languages a lot more accessible to study, and it allows you to study languages regardless of whether they have a written script or not. And linguists don't know all the languages in the world, so this alphabet allows us to study languages, work with languages, and document languages. So something that's cool is actually realizing which sounds are made in the same part of your mouth. So the American English T and D, those are made in the same part, T and D. The only difference is that D is voiced and T is unvoiced. So T, 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 D, D, D. You can touch here and feel the vibration where your voice is being used. Same thing goes with B and P, pop versus bob. Those are the same motions, but you're just adding voice or removing voice. I think it was just fun to challenge my perception of sound because I think before I learned about the IPA a few years ago, I had this almost assumption that every sound that I was making was using a different part of my mouth, and the IPA just shows you that that's not actually true and that even if there's a lot of sounds, there might be only a few places of the mouth that you're using. If you're curious what my name looks like in IPA, here it is. And in order to be able to type that, so this is one of my favorite websites for generating IPA. So this is the entire chart and this is the vowel chart. And basically you would just type. You can type and also these are the diacritics. So I put in K and then I'm gonna use this alveolar trill. Um, and then we have the short I sound first. So this vowel chart will show you kind of how open, um, how rounded, ooh, versus ah, versus ah, ah, um, how rounded something is and how um, high your tongue is in your mouth, so ah versus ah, how much space there is in your oral cavity basically. So basically that's how you can play around with this and then I would put the T um, and of course in 
as a linguist, you wouldn't call it a T, you would say unvoiced dental plosive. Um, and then I will put the diacritic to dentalize it. And this is the E sound. Um, and yeah, you basically just go about using the IPA picker like that. So the other thing the IPA allows you to do is distinguish which sounds are phonemes in a language. So a phoneme is the smallest unit of sound that can affect meaning. A phoneme doesn't have meaning itself, but by changing something that is a phoneme, you will change something into a different word. For example, S and P are phonemes in English, because by taking this word, sit, if you change the S to a P, pit, it becomes a different word. Remember in my previous video I said, put your hand in front of your mouth and listen to pit versus spit, you'll notice that there's a P sound and a P sound in English that are both P. But these are not phonemes because you can't change the meaning of a word from pit to bit. Those are the same word. So in that case, P is the phoneme or an unvoiced bilabial stop is the phoneme, and the variations, which are called allophones, are unvoiced bilabial stop non-aspirated and unvoiced bilabial stop aspirated. So these are the two allophones that make up this phoneme P in English. One of the projects we did in my phonology class was to decipher a mystery language. So we were given a bunch of audio files and we had to listen to them and we had no clue which language it was and what the phonemes and the sounds of that language were. So we had to transcribe everything into IPA and then figure out which sounds were phonemes, which were allophones. And this actually becomes really difficult when you don't have a visual reference, when you've never heard a language before. In some languages, K and G, K and G can be allophones and there's just natural variation with the way speakers speak. But as an English speaker, I would totally think, oh my god, K and G are totally different sounds. So it's really interesting to see what other languages, speakers, perceptions of similar sounds are. So the first instance I thought of this was in Zoom. I had a class where there was only about 13, 14 people and Sorry, but everyone had white passing like standard names, but me and another girl did not. And I realized that we would always get called on last during our first initial icebreakers. And it was so obvious to me that it was because of our names. Everyone in that class was really nice, we we're all friends, but it got me thinking, what if we just wrote our IPA names in Zoom or on name tags in real life? What if that was just the standard so that no one had a problem pronouncing names? Another application for the IPA is in saving languages or documenting languages. There's lots of languages that are not written languages, they're only spoken, so there is no script for you to write down this language. So in that case, a lot of times linguists will go out into the field, do field work, and basically document these languages in IPA so that they don't disappear. I know a lot of you might have not heard of the IPA, but I actually found it quite interesting how widely it's used in the Western classical music field. So I've been doing choir for many years, and I remember in high school my choir director, when he was giving us direction on how to pronounce our consonants in a song, he would always say things like more fricative, fricative, or plosive, and we would just repeat after him, but then I took intro to linguistics while I was in high school, and suddenly I felt part of the secret club that knew exactly what fricative and plosive meant. I continued choir in college, and I found that actually the choral department uses IPA very widely, and everyone knows IPA, and that's how music is taught, that's how a lot of the vowels and the pronunciation is taught, and let me show you. I have a song right now in Gaelic, and it makes no sense when you read the letters, what sounds they correspond to as an English speaker. But on the back, let me show you, there's actually an IPA transcription of the song. So when we were going over it in class, everyone was of course trying to listen to the director and make sure they pronounced everything correctly, but I was also able to read the IPA and make sure that all of my interpretations or perceptions of his sound were correct. The IPA is also something that I'm really surprised is not used in the language education world. I have taken many language classes in many different languages and I have never once seen the IPA being used to teach pronunciation, even though it would be so helpful for speakers to understand what are exactly are the phonemes in this language? What sounds exist? What sounds don't exist? The IPA isn't just these symbols, it's also having that understanding that, oh, P isn't just P, it's P and B and P, and that T can be the, the, ta, the. It's having that understanding of the diversity of the sounds that exist, and that some languages don't have certain nuanced sounds.
I don't have some grand conclusion to this video, I just thought it would be fun to make because I feel like linguistics is a field that no one really knows about and I thought I would share this very small but important facet of the field. I also think that IPA is a really simple way to see both how diverse the world is and how many different sounds we make as human beings, but also how similar we all are in that there's 6,000 languages in the world and countless more dialects, but all of the sounds can more or less be captured in this one chart. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy content like this. As always, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I will see you next time. Bye!